a me piuttosto di lasciare il cellulare dico guarda, portami via tutto o non prendermi il cellulare. Cioè oggi come oggi il mobile è, è assolutamente fondamentale, ma non mi sento convinto, va bene. Quanto, per quanto tempo sareste disposti a restare senza cellulare? Chi, eh, sulle mani, sinceri. Quanto tempo sareste disposti a restare senza cellulare? Un'ora. Ok. Un giorno? Una settimana? Bugiardi. Il prossimo ospite arriva direttamente da Londra eh, per il director di Tube Mogul eh, Europe e Yab Europe member. Abbiamo qui, eh, penso sia la prima volta in Italia, un grande applauso, Nick Raid. Buongiorno, uh, come stai? Yes, that's all my Italian, I'm afraid. Um, thank you for having me, it's, it's, it's great to be here. Um, today we're going to talk through some of the work that the IAB Video Task Force has done with regard to insight research around video. Um, my name's Nick Reed, I'm Managing Director of, of Tube Mogul. And we're a software company. As a software company, we focus purely on the buy side. And that means our customers are agencies, are advertisers, and their trading desks. Anyone who wants to use a platform to plan, buy, manage, and track their video campaigns across multiple screens and devices. And screens and devices used to be desktop. It's now desktop and mobile, and now desktop, mobile, and TV. And I think that's a recurring theme of what we're starting to see happen in terms of how consumers are engaging with video. And that's what the research talks through. So as an agenda, we'll do a quick overview of the European digital advertising market, look at the growth that it's experienced over the last year. We'll look at what's driving digital, digital video advertising and adoption. We'll look at the attitudes towards digital video advertising themselves. Discuss cross-screen, look at supply and demand and look at what lies in the future when it comes to digital video and how consumers, and more importantly, advertisers, are working with that format. So before we begin, I have a statement to say programmatic is not a media channel. Programmatic is simply using software to plan and buy media. Software has changed the banking industry, it's changed the travel industry, it's changed the music industry, it's changed logistics imagery, industry, and it's changing how we plan and buy media. And again, that shift we'll start to see throughout the research. So let's look at the overall European digital advertising market. So in 2015, we saw digital advertising spend of 36.4 billion. What we've seen over the last two decades is fundamental growth and change within online advertising. It's now bigger than TV across Europe. So it's a monumental year. Of that 36.4 billion, what's the growth of digital video in the ad market? So you'll see, 2015, there was a 35% increase from 1.7 to 2.3 billion. 2.3 billion euros spent on digital video advertising. And again, if we break that down, within that, where does programmatic video sit? So again, 2015, you're seeing 540 million, or 0.5 billion euros being spent on programmatic video. That's a big shift and increase year on year, nearly 100% for the last two years. So again, the research and the numbers are starting to show and reinforce this massive fundamental change we're seeing in how media and planning and buying is being executed. In fact, uh, the, 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 actually the Italian market actually showed the largest percentage of growth across Europe when it comes to, to digital video and programmatic space. And actually going back, the overall advertising market, programmatic in Europe, is 5.7 billion. 40% of all display now is traded programmatically. So again, we're seeing a big shift. So let's look and understand what's driving video advertising adoption. The European research methodology, uh, the IOB Video Council anticipated or uh, delivered between July and September, did an online survey for nearly 700 people. Of those 700 people, they were made up of advertisers, agencies, and publishers. 
So the research gave a really clear and concise overview of the European market in terms of what's going on. Some of those people who responded had a local remit, others had a global remit, and others had pan-European. In total, it covered 31 markets. So it's a wonderful piece of insight, a, a modern-day uh, picture of what's going on for the video space. So what did it show? I think uh, we all understand that video is now mainstream. So 92% of advertisers, 90% of agencies, and 92% of publishers all view online video to be an absolute mainstream source. More importantly, what we're starting to see, hello, what we're starting to see is desktop as mainstream. And again, what's changing that, although it's mainstream, although most of the investment's been put into, into desktop, 27% of advertisers say more than two thirds of their digital video ads being allocated to desktop. Likewise with agencies and likewise with publishers. What we're also, start, also starting to see is that shift from the consumer towards mobile. And so though desktop's premium now, and is a focus now, it'd be interesting to see what happens this time next year as we see the rise of mobile and tablet. Because your consumers don't think of video or mobile on desktop, they just think of video as video. And as soon as we start to work out how we can reach and engage those consumers on any screen, any device, the sooner we'll have a more of an opportunity to really start on target with those audiences. Pre-roll dominates video investment. 30% of advertisers say more than two-thirds of their digital video budgets are allocated to pre-roll. 45% of agencies, 64% publishers. Behind pre-roll is, is actually display. And that's a good indication of actually the inventory cons constraints we see across video. I'll come on supply and demand in a second. But publishers are struggling to create the volume that the, the advertisers and agencies want to utilize to reach those audiences. And after, after display, it's also outstream. And again, businesses like Tease are starting to drive and grow that part of the, of the ecosystem and the environment. So, the attitudes towards digital video advertising. Digital video is used to build brand awareness. 78% of advertisers aim to uplift brand awareness by undertaking digital video. Video is video, it's sight, sound, and motion. It's always been the most compelling brand medium there is. And rightly so, advertisers are utilizing that to see how it can change and uplift their brand recall, brand perception more so than are utilizing video in terms of, of direct response. And again, 84% of agencies believe that brand awareness is absolutely key for video. And what we're starting to see based on that is a moving away, if you like, of ad serving metrics when it comes to video. For a long, long time, video was based on completion rates as a KPI. But when you think about it now, what's the first question you ask? One, has anyone seen my ad? So viewability. Who has seen my ad? So on target audience. When the right person has seen my ad, what have they done in terms of engagement? That's completion rate. And then finally, kind of what's it done to my brand in terms of recall, uplift, purchase intent? All these, all these KPIs or key performance indicators are incredibly important. And what software is enabling us all to be able to do is utilize and look at these all in detail. So what we start to see is much more recognition of the brand uplift and impact that video is having on, on, on consumers. So, supply and demand. I think uh, digital video imagery is still being established. And if you think about um, the number of advertisers, you know, a third of all publishers state that less than 20% of the advertising imagery is digital video. And when you see the next slide, you understand the impact that that has. Still, 34% of publishers gain more than 80% of their digital advertising revenues from direct sales. And only 11% view exchange or networks have a role. Now, that's more a reflection of two things. One, the challenges around supply and demand when it comes to video across Europe, and two, the perception that programmatic is exchange-based buying or real-time bidding. 
And again, we start to see a big shift across Europe in terms of how video is being bought programmatically. If you look at France over the last year, it's a big shift towards programmatic direct. So inventory is still being sold on a fixed impression at a fixed price, but that buy is being automated. So again, I look forward to being here next year and look at the figures and understand actually how automation is changing, but actually the pricing is still being fixed rather than real-time bidding. Because as we all know and understand, video is a premium, and there's oversupply, there's undersupply and overdemand. If we look at where that video is being generated, again, it, it makes sense. It's the premium channels of news and sport. Because when we think about pre-roll, it should go before premium content. Again, the interesting trend we we'll start to see as we move into the next year is what's happening, what's happening in video with businesses like Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat, who all clearly recognize the opportunity to mo not just monetize, but utilize video. And again, if you think about how those audiences are engaged through mobile, again, we're going to see this big shift and move in terms of audience consumer consumption and therefore the opportunity to reach on target audiences at scale. So for me, one of the most important things is cross screen. Cross screen of TV and digital. Again, really encourage and see 82% of advertisers and 88% of agencies plan their digital video advertising campaigns in conjunction with their TV campaigns. I think what's really important there is the words in conjunction with. Because I still feel at the moment, TV and digital is still being planned in silos. You still have TV budgets and digital budgets or mobile budgets. We still think in a siloed way, and yet our consumers are looking at video on any screen in any device. So the sooner we learn to how to execute in a much more consolidated way, we can truly start to re realize and recognize how we can reach those consumers from a much more uh, controlled reach and frequency perspective. The wonderful thing, though, this, this, this world is shifting and changing in terms of how TV and video is looked upon. And to be honest with you, it, it's becoming more challenging to reach audiences. If you go back 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you can reach 90% of your audience in most markets by running a TV ad. There's been so much disruption to how consumers are engaging with content through device fragmentation. If anything, kind of the marketplace has, has, has seen a rate it's never experienced before, and actually the marketplace has changed more in the last three years than it has done in the last 30 years with device fragmentation. What that provides is an opportunity to reach consumers, but what that also provides or creates is, is a challenge. We need to start to think cross-device, and cross-screen. And again, cross-device, to an extent, means we, when it comes to measurement, we lose the proxy of the cookie. Because actually, as we all know on mobile, the cookies become redundant. So how do we start to think about cross-screen and cross-device measurement from a people-based measurement perspective? Again, we're starting to see a lot of change with businesses like Facebook and Atlas looking at people-based measurement to really understand or help advertise and agency understand how we truly measure and track reaching frequency across device and screen. So the future of digital advertising, what's next? So you'll be delighted to know that 90% uh, plus across agency, advertiser and publisher believe investment in digital video advertising is set to increase. I think in addition to that, we'll simply see more automation. And automation doesn't mean auction-based trading. It means utilizing software to enable greater efficiency and effectiveness when it comes to planning and buying media. And video is impacted by this. In fact, we see automation across desktop, mobile, linear TV in certain markets. And I think in Europe, we'll start to see certain markets look at how they start to drive data on automation over TV buys, whether it's IPTV, not necessarily linear TV, but also start to see kind of the impact of Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, all these businesses and all their consumers are really start to recognize the value of video. And the impact this has will be incredibly interesting over the next year. So what's next? Digital out of home? 
audio, it's already happening in certain markets. All of these uh, screens provide an opportunity to run digital video and engage with audiences. So, key takeaways in summary. Digital video advertising is a central component of the media plan. It's about driving engagement, and it's driving on-target audiences, and, and reaching and inspiring those audiences. Digital video provides an opportunity for brand advertisers to drive brand metrics such as awareness, recall, uplift. Digital video is being planned in conjunction with TV, and that's going to continue to evolve. In-stream dominates with publishers, but we're also starting to see the, 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 the benefit and the creation of, of outstream simply because of the supply and demand constraints there are. Programmatic video grows, and the way in which you plan and bought is shifting. And that's 15 minutes. Thank you very much, guys, for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Allora, vi ricordo anche che abbiamo ovviamente una Wi-Fi, quindi gli